Hey guys, it's me again, Sergio, and I'm here with another uh, diary update for uh, Silhouette. Um, so what I've been doing since the last video was um, trying to lock down the locations. Um, and uh, it's kind of weird because I'm doing it from Los Angeles, and so I have to go back and forth between LA and San Diego a lot um, because we're filming in San Diego. Um, and it's always a gamble. Um, when locking these down, uh, just because you never know, um, how kind of, um, the people might feel, even though you're not doing anything too intense, but you know, that's, it's the idea of their image being on your movie. So, um, it, it's, it's really interesting because I have to reach around and, uh, find people that, um, are connected to those locations because, uh, uh, Robert Rodriguez wasn't wrong um, when he said film with what you, what you got. Um, so I, I knew I had the potential of having specific locations. And with that in mind, I started to use those locations as maybe like key points for my film. Uh, so um, because uh, they were within the realm of being able to film there, I started to write with them. And then I started also to write with a plan B and C locations. Um, but luckily one of the locations pulled through, um, they gave us a time limit, but they let us film. So hopefully we'll be able to have some wiggle room with that time limit, but, um, that's great. It's great news. Um, I'm getting, uh, uh, I'm trying to get in contact with the person for the next location, which is a hotel, um, specifically because the lobby looks, uh, like a Renaissance, um, uh, castle. Uh, it's it's the strangest uh, thing. Um, I was wandering around San Diego and uh, the downtown specifically because that's the primary setting for the film. And when I first accidentally stumbled upon this setting, um, uh, I it, I was in awe because it was so crazy. This this magnificent place was hidden in from plain view, and it was uh, it was such a cool location that. Um, I had to try to see if I can find a way to to use that in my film. So I wrote that location in. I do have a plan B to be able to write that in as well. But the point was like the setting kind of helped to dictate um, sort of the emotional key points of the characters. So I was writing intentionally with the low resources that I had. I, I did a similar thing with Way Down, uh, my first feature. Uh, I wrote with the things that I had and see and tried to see if I could stitch together these settings uh, in a coherent narrative that was meaningful. Um, and luckily that worked out. Uh, 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 right now I am finishing packing so that I can go to um, the Southern Cities Film Festival in South Carolina. I'll be there uh, for the duration of the festival, uh, meeting other filmmakers and um, uh, talking about Way Down and also Silhouette. So we'll see how that goes. But but the point is that I, I wrote um, with the with the resources that I had. Um, I don't have a lot of money, so I had to see what uh, I could get. And same thing with this one. And the only thing was that there's three locations that don't have too big a roles uh, within the film, but it's still that difficult process of asking. Um, so uh, you know, you just uh, you just try to play the whole schmoozing up game of like. Hi, I'm, I'm a charming young person who is trying to make a short film, uh, and you just try to see what you can do from there. Um, but uh, but I guess the key thing really is just being able to be adjustable uh, and writing and creating your work with those adjustments uh, potentially being the cause for it to be the way that it is. So like if um, if you don't have specific actors or if you know that there's a weird scheduling with your actors, then at that point um, it's up to the director or the team tackling the project to figure out a way to um, have those constraints serve the narrative. So instead of thinking it like, instead of believing that you're locked in, and that you're barred in to specific requirements. Um, it's it's kind of like thinking that, oh, these, this is the playground that I have to play with. How can I use it to the best of my ability? Um, I'm an improviser, and uh, part of the things that we're taught uh, as improvisers is the Herald. The Herald um, is kind of like a form, a structure that improvisers 
um, work with. Uh, and I know the idea of improvising is the idea of creating something out of nothing and then just being kind of free form. But that's just like the general gist of what most people believe, which is to an extent true. But what's also um, interesting about the Herald is that while there are specific beats and specific kind of guidelines to go in, um, they do create kind of like a limit for you to work in. But within that limit um, sort of allows an eruption of creativity because now you're forced to look at the things that you have and look at all sides of them instead of uh, just being so free that you can use whatever you want, uh, however you want. Um, and, uh, and cause in all honesty, in my belief, it's like, if you have the ability to do whatever you want in a way that kind of shackles you because now you aren't thinking in a creative sense of like, Ooh, how can I use this thing in the most interesting way possible? It's more like, Oh, let's just get the thing that I was thinking of. And it kind of limits you in that way. Um, the same goes with, uh, with the tools that you use with, uh, as a filmmaker, like if you have access to like a drone, right? A drone's a real nice piece of equipment. It makes super nice setting shots, expo uh, 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 set, uh, shots that kind of pan in, uh, from far distances, really cool things. But just because you have access to that, I don't think you should use it. Um, it's, it's more whether or not the limits that you have or the things that you have serve the narrative. Um, because, uh, because I've seen a few examples of people just because they have a thing, um, try to use it and it ends up hurting their project because they're thinking that, Oh, now I have this thing. I have this better camera. I have this railing system. I have this new set of, uh, spooky lights. I have this, um, this cool new piece of equipment that we just have to use. I don't know how we're going to use it, but we need to use it. Uh, instead of, instead of thinking that maybe we don't need to use it maybe it's just going to uh, force us to, to limit the project in another way. Um, and so that's, uh, that's kind of what I try to do is work with what the bare bones that I have. So I don't have all this fancy equipment. I don't have access to all these cool locations and stuff. It's quite literally just the run and gun of what you got. Um, and I always think it's funny because I've never read Robert Rodriguez's book. Um, uh, but I know and have heard his kind of mentality and I, and I do agree with that. It's what you got. Um, uh, you know, um, many filmmakers have done that. Um, Clerks has done that. All they had was a convenience store and they made a film off of that. Uh, and that kind of like echoed and affected other people. Same thing with, uh, uh mariachi, uh, that affected all they had was like a guitar case and, uh, an iguana or excuse me, a turtle. And he tried to find a way to make that as compelling as possible. Um, and, and with way down, all I knew is I had access to a coffee shop, uh, a truck, uh, and, and the beach. That's all I had. And that's what I was able to work with. Um, for this one, it's now looking at the fact that I have, that I'm forcing myself, uh, on purpose to work with less and to see what I can make. Uh, and for this story, it turns out it became a story about people who have nothing and whether or not they deserve anything at all. And it's kind of funny how that kind of inspired the theme of the story in that sense. Um, yeah. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I think limits are good and sometimes it forces you to be more creative than if you weren't not, if you didn't have any. Um, uh, you know, this isn't for everybody, you know, some, it's, it's wonderful to have all this fancy equipment. I would totally do it if I had access to all that stuff. Um, and I would hopefully not be too reckless and just use it just because, but, um, but like, I think it is sometimes a good idea to scale back and to look down and to see what you can do. You know, uh, Quentin Tarantino kind of did that with the hateful eight limiting himself with one location, you know, scaling back from the, from the epic of kill bill and, the epic of uh, Django Unchained and working with uh, other things that are less. Um, and I think it forces you to be more creative that way. But that's that's just my opinion that uh, everyone has their own thing. But um, I think it's interesting to see what you can do when you have less. Because at, at a certain point, you start relying less on the spectacle, spectacle of the film and start relying more on the emotions and um, what's happening now to the characters.
But uh, yeah, that's it for now. Um, hopefully, uh, I'll see you guys, have a video up for you guys next week and um, uh, see what else is going on with the project and I'll keep you guys updated. Um, but for the meantime, uh, we're looking like we're on schedule. Um, we're going to be shooting in January. That's still the plan. And I hopefully, hopefully that remains the plan. Uh, and then we'll have a film sometime in 2018 in some festival, maybe. Uh, but it may be, and hopefully, if we're lucky, we get that festival in 2019 because it would be getting to Sundance or something. But that's just uh, that's just dreams. And the moment, we just got to focus on the now. But uh, talk to you guys later.